Amen, amen. Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I thank the Lord for another beautiful day that he's allowed us to see. I thank God for the beautiful weather. And, and I pray that all those who will be tuning in or will see this, this teaching on this afternoon, I pray that you've had a blessed day. I pray that um, you've just been feeling the, the, the blessings of the Lord all day long, how he continues to watch over us, take care of us, protect us. And so I'm always grateful and, um, for how good the Lord is to us. Don't want to prolong the time on this afternoon. I want to get right into our teaching. We're going to try to cover a lot of material on this afternoon. Um, the Lord led me a little uh, different direction on this afternoon, and I pray that you'll be able to keep up with me. I will uh, take my time just so you all can uh, be with me as far as the direction that the Holy Spirit is leading me on this afternoon. But we're going to transition right into the word of prayer, and we're going to get right into our study on this afternoon. Father in heaven, we just come to you on this afternoon. We thank you, Lord God, for just allowing us to see one more day. We thank you for life, health, and strength, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity for the study of your word, Father God. We thank you for your word and you being a keeper of your word, faithful to your word. Father God, you even said in your word that heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word, Father God, uh, shall remain, Father God. And so we thank you, Lord God, that you're not like man, that you should lie, Father God. That man can lie to us, Father God, but you are a keeper of your word, Father God. And so we thank you, Father God, for all that you've done, all that you're going to do, Father God. We pray, Lord God, that you bless this teaching on tonight. We pray, Father God, that you teach and have your way however you desire to lead and guide. And whatever you desire to speak through me on this afternoon, Father God, I am a willing vessel that is open to um, your leading, Father God, your guiding, Father God, on this afternoon, Father God. So speak to us. Give us an ear to hear what you have to say, Father God, that we may tune in, that we may grow in the grace and the knowledge of you, Father God. Any things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. What I am going to do on this afternoon, as you can see in the caption, that we're going to cover uh, chapter 6, 7, 8, and prayerfully 9. I'm going to do um, a slight review in chapter 6. And we're going to flow right into chapter 7. The reason I'm doing a slight review in chapter 6 is a lot of the things that we're seeing in the book of Revelations, especially in the 6th chapter, um, dealing with the, the four different seals um, that were broken. Um, we deal with uh, the white horse, the red horse, um, the black horse, and the pale horse. There were some things that um, the Lord was dealing with me about um, that is in Matthew chapter 24. Um, now, Jesus, when he is speaking to the, uh, to the uh, disciples, and they're asking him, you know, when will these things be? When, when will we know? And he begins to speak some things. He begins to prophetically speak some things and, and allowing them to foresee uh, by the things that Jesus is saying. But he is really touching on some of the things that's happening um, as far as in the book of Revelations, even as far as these seals, excuse me, being um, when they were... Um, um, broken or, or when things were being unveiled through each seal. So what I'm going to try to do, and, and I had rewrote my notes just to try to um, uh, make the points that I'm, I'm trying to make by the leading of the Holy Spirit on this afternoon. There were just some things that Jesus spoke in the book of Matthew. So for those of you that are tuning in, you just jumped in, if we can... Um, have your, uh, your Bibles open to Matthew, the 24th chapter. And then also, if you can put a sticky note or a piece of paper um, from Matthew, not Matthew, but Revelation chapter 6, because I'm going to do a lot of reference to these different seals, the first four seals um, that were um, broken um, by the Lamb of God. And so as we jump right into here, um, here in um when we look at uh, Revelation chapter 6 and we talk about the different um, seals that were broken and we talk about, like I just said, the white horse, which is in Revelation 6 and 2. Um, the white horse is a representation of the Antichrist or, or, um, because he comes in the way of Christ. And, and, and the Bible even tells us, in, in I think it's 1 John, that there is meant the Antichrist. The spirit is here. The Antichrist himself has not came, but the spirit of the Antichrist is here. How do you know that? Because he's a spirit of deception. And Jesus brings some of these things out. He doesn't say for, for, verbatim the actual seals or the actual horses.
but he touches on some things that has been re, that's coming, that's being unveiled in chapter six. And so we talk about um, the first seal, which is the white horse. We talk about the second seal, which is the red horse. We talk about the third and the fourth seal, the black horse and the pale horse. And we talk about the representation of all of them. On um, the black horse being, you know, the famine and 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 so so on, the scarcity of food and scarcity of. Uh, uh, of things that we may need for everyday living um, and then we talk about the red horse which takes away the peace of the earth um, brings conflict, brings war we talk about the pale horse the pale horse being um, the horse of death or Hades now Hades was not talking about hell in this context, it was dealing with the grave but he had the power to kill um, it was dealing or all, all this is dealing with um, famine and all this stuff but let's read here if you can with me, those who are tuning in, um, Matthew, uh, the 24th chapter, and some of the things I just briefly touched on, um, you will see some similarities uh, with when Jesus begins to speak. You will see how when we get to Revelation chapter 6 and different seals were um, broken um, by the Lamb of God, we, we, we can see some similarity it, it is the reason why the Holy Spirit is leading me this way, because Jesus prophetically um, speaks. He, he, he prophetically sees what is going to transpire. And we know he's, he knows the, um, the end from the beginning, so he knows everything. But he says here, um, Matthew 24, I'm going to start with verse 3. He says, and he sat on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the age. Jesus answered them. It says take heed that no one deceives you. Now when we look at the first seal. As I just touched on. We know that the first seal was. Uh, was a representation of the antichrist. Because we see that he comes on a white horse. And, and we know our savior is, is to come on a horse. And when we talked about. You know when a king rides on a horse. He's coming back for war. He's coming back for battle. Um, but when he rides on a donkey, as we see on um, his triumphal entry, Jesus was coming in peace. But we know in, in Revelation chapter 19, he's coming back on a horse. But this particular description in Revelation 6 and 2, it talks about um, when the seal was broken. It was, it was one that was riding on a white horse, and he had a bow. He didn't have a sword. And so what the Antichrist does, he tries to mimic our Savior. He tries to mimic Christ. And so he comes in the form of light. He comes in the form of Christ, but he's not Christ. And so it's very, very important for us that have the Holy Spirit that we stay very prayerful. Now, those of you that are not saved, you don't believe in the Word of God, you don't believe in Jesus, the whole nine, you, you know, you believe, you know, man tamper with the Word and all this kind of stuff that you, that, that you allow the Antichrist spirit to deceive you and to bamboozle you, to bewitch you, to trick you. Listen, this is, you know, and, and, I, and I said it even in my prayer, the word of God is, is, is being fulfilled right now. The word of God, you, you, you know, is being fulfilled right now. And so the Antichrist, he, and Jesus clearly tells us, don't be deceived. He opens this up. How will we know that, that when, when it's the end of the age? He says, don't be deceived. Why? Because this white horse comes in a way to deceive, comes in a way as if he is Christ. And, and, and even in the, the book of Revelation 6 and 2, it, it says this, if I can read it real briefly. And it says, Then I, I heard one of the four living creatures saying, The voice was like, was with, with voice like thunder, Come see and look. And I looked, and there before, was, before me was a white horse. He sat on it, had a bow and a crown, was given to him, and he went forth conquering that he might overcome. And so he came in a form of Christ. He came in a form as if, if, if this was Christ that was coming back for us, but it was not him. And so that's why it's very important that the believers, we stay in a place of consecration, because when you are staying consecrated, you, spiritually, um, your eyes will be open even more. Spiritually, you hear much clearer. Um, Rather than when you just go through your daily routine. But we need to stay consecrated. What do you mean staying consecrated? Stay prayerful. Stay, you should continue to fast. Not just 
um, when you have a corporate fast, but fast throughout the day, fast throughout the week. You should be setting time aside to stay consecrated because they we're living in a time that we need to discern the times because the word of God is being um, prophetically um, fulfilled in this time. So, so the first thing he tells the, uh, the disciples is, is don't be deceived for many will come in my name. This Antichrist, his first horse coming as if he is Christ. He said, many will come in my name. He says, I am the Christ and will deceive many. There are many that will come in the name of Christ. They will come as a form of light and will deceive many. And that's why it's very important that the believer, you, you stay close to Christ in this season. Because the Bible even talks about the very elect will be, it will be a great falling away. And so for those of you that claim salvation, you claim to be a believer, listen, you're going to have to uh, stay on your A game. You're going to have to, uh, you know, you, you can't straddle the fence anymore. You know, you, you can't continue to have inconsistent prayer life. And, and one minute you want to live saved and then the next minute you don't. Listen, we're living in a time I'm challenged every day that I have to stay in the presence of God and I have to stay before God because my prayer has been for years that, Lord, I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to be lost. So if I don't want to be deceived or lost, guess what? I'm going to have to stay close to Jesus. That's the only way you're going to make it. Okay? And so he tells them here, he said, many will come in my name. He says, I am the Christ and he will deceive many. Watch this. He said, you will hear wars and rumors of wars. Are we not hearing this right now? Jesus prophetically is speaking this. He's telling them this is what's going to happen. This is how you know it's the end of the age. And when we look at the second seal with the red horse, we know that he's come to take peace away from the earth. And there's people that's looking for peace right now, but they can't find it because your only peace is in Christ Jesus. But the red horses came to take away peace from the earth and to bring war and to bring conflict. We see war and conflict every single day. It may not be a huge war um, where you got one nation against another nation at this present moment. And, and, and those wars are going on. We may not hear about it. But those wars are going on. But we have war within our community. We have a war right now with the police and, and, and how they're, they are, they're just purposely shooting African Americans. We're, we're seeing this. How do you know? He told the disciples, how, how, the disciples said, how do you know this is going to be end of the age? Because we're right now in, 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 a, in a time where people, they're looking for peace. People are angry. They're ready to retaliate. And they are retaliating. This is, this is the time that we're living in because they have no peace. Matter of fact, you disturb some people's peace. They were at peace until you disturbed it. And so we see all this injustice and all this stuff going on around us. We see injustice in our community. We see injustice on TV. It's going viral. We see all of this injustice that's going on. And so when we look at the second seal and, and the red horse that he comes to take away the peace of, from the earth and to bring war and conflict, here it is here. He tells them in verse 6, he said, you will hear war, hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. This is to comfort the believer that all that is transpiring right now and it may, it may stir up your flesh to the point where you want to retaliate because you can relate because the ones that's being attacked, the one that's going through the injustice, you can relate to them because they look like you. They look like me. Okay, I had to tell my sons, I said, listen, we're living in a strange time that I don't want anything happening to you and so you're going to have to watch what you do. You got to watch where you go. Because just because it had not hit Youngstown yet, listen, you never know. You, you just never know. But we're living in this time, end of the age. So we got to discern, and, 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 and I'm challenged as well. I cannot be fleshly right now. Because the enemy is strategically trying to find ways to knock us off course. And so if you act carnal and act fleshly, you're only giving the enemy more fuel to attack. And so oftentimes when he can't get me, he'll try to attack my wife or he'll try to attack my children. he try to attack my finances. We're living in this time now. And so you got to stay on your A game. you got to stay in the presence of God. He says, see that you are not troubled. Don't be troubled. 
He says, he's telling the disciples, listen, you want to know the end of the age. Then don't be troubled when these things start happening. When these things start happening, your eyes should be open. I'm talking about your spiritual eyes, your spiritual ears. You should be in tune like, God, what's going on? He says, for all these things must happen, but the end is not yet. So what Jesus is saying is, the scripture's got to be fulfilled, but the end ain't, is not yet. Now, for, you, for those of you who don't believe in the word of God, listen, the word of God is coming to pass. It's being fulfilled. I hope some of you unbelievers hear this. Because you talk about, you talk against God, you talk about, you talk against Jesus, you talk about against the word of God and, and all this kind of stuff, but the word of God is being fulfilled right before your eyes. But because you don't want to see, you're not going to see it. But it says here, for all these things much happen, but it's not the end yet. Watch this, for nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. We just talked about the red horse. This stuff is going to happen. He didn't say the red horse, but we see the comparison of when that, when, when that, that seal was broken and what was unveiled to us. Watch this. There will be famines, epidemics, and earthquakes in various places. Now this kind of taps into the third and the fourth seal with the black horse and the pale horse. Because when we look at the black horse, that deals with, um, you, can, you can put the pandemic in there, epidemics, pandemics. Um, you can put uh, the famine. You can put, you know, scarcity. All this kind of thing is what's happening. And the reality of it is well, we're experiencing this now. I talked about it on last week with the black horse because the cost of the thing, you know, we used to go to the store and buy, go to the dollar store. And you would buy a box of tissues, and maybe it was 50 cents, maybe it was a dollar. Now it went up a dollar fifty, maybe two dollars. You know, um, toilet tissue went up. Um, you know, you used to pay, you know, two fifty for a roll of four. Now you're paying three fifty, four dollars, whatever the case is. So you see this stuff happening. The word of God is being fulfilled, and so He's saying there will be famines, epidemics. Pandemics, earthquakes, we're hearing earthquakes in diverse places. This stuff is happening right now. It says all these things are the beginning of sorrows. So we see some of this. And maybe not to the degree that some people believe when these seals are, are broken. But look, the, the point is we're living in a time that you can see the similarities of these seals. So don't be closed-minded, oh, well, the seals can't be broken because, you know, it's not to the extreme. Listen, just because it happened happened in the United States does not mean that it's not happening throughout the world. And sometimes we try to base it upon what's happening here, and there's stuff happening in other countries, in third world countries that don't have. There's famine happening right now in third world countries. There's wars happening right now. There's believers being killed for the sake of Christ. There, there, there's believers having church, and, and, and the church is getting bombed in the midst of the service. Now, you don't hear about that, but this is stuff that's going on. Why? Because we're in the end of the age. And so you got to have your spiritual eye open, your spiritual ears open to hear what God is saying in this time. He's telling us, for us believers, don't be worried, don't be troubled. We can't allow the spirit of fear to take over now. Can't allow the spirit of fear. You know what the book of Timothy says? He said, I'm not giving you the spirit of fear. So you know the spirit of fear is not of Christ. The perverse spirit. These spirits are not of God. Perverse, twisted. Some of you twisted right now. Because you're in perverse stuff. You're twisting the truth. You allow that spirit. That, these are spirits. And you're allowing the Antichrist to deceive you. And, and, and what comes along with it is perverse. He, he, he had twisted the truth on you to deceive you. And so some of you are, are in the dark because you don't want to open your eyes to the truth. So it says here, verse 9, Then they will hand you over to be persecuted and will kill you. 
and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Then many will fall away and betray one another and one and hate one another and many false prophets will rise and will deceive many because iniquity will abound but the love the love of many will grow cold so this stuff is happening right now false prophets are rising up now that's why there, there seem to be so much division and so much controversy that's why I said I, I no longer want to just go by the title Christian because everybody's saying I'm a Christian, but you're not living Christ-like or you're not living to uh, the, the standards of the kingdom or the standards of Christ. So I'd rather be a disciple because, listen, disciples follow Jesus' teaching. They follow Jesus' example. So what I'm finding out, everybody can claim to be a Christian and not be Christ-like. But to be a disciple, you have to follow Jesus' teaching. You have to. Because disciple means follower. So I got to follow his teaching. I got to follow his example. That he that, that, um, that went before us according to the scripture. So I'm a disciple of Jesus. I'm just making a distinction. Because Christianity, especially um, according to America... Has is so popular now. It's so popular that Christianity has been watered down. Everybody's saying I'm a Christian, and and they believe whatever they believe. But everybody can't say I'm a disciple, because to be a disciple, then there's transformation. That means you have to submit to the teachings. You have to submit to the path. You have to submit to the will of God. Through, through our Savior. But it says, then many will, verse 10, Matthew 24, 10, then many will fall away and betray one another. We see it happening now. People, people leaving the faith, betraying those who they were in the faith with. We see it happening. There's people that I was preaching the gospel with. Now they don't even preach the gospel. Man, I don't believe in that Bible. So man, I don't believe in it. I mean, I did my, I did my, did my history. I did all my history, man, and all this stuff ain't real. What is the Antichrist doing? Man, Christianity, that's that white man's religion. This, this, this is the big talk. It's been the talk for years. I don't even argue with people like that no more. It's been the talk for, oh, that's the white man religion. Now, the, the struggle of this is that when they say that, they're talking about the 15th century. What happened to the first 14? If you go back to your history, you'll find out that this, as we say, the white man had nothing to do with it. They had nothing to do with it. So what about 14 centuries before all of this? You got to do your, you got to do your real history. But these are the times. Why am I going this direction as the Holy Spirit is leading me? Why? Because these are the times we're living in. And the Holy Ghost has given me the boldness just to address what's going on right now according to Revelation, what's according to the scriptures, according to what Jesus spoke. To what? To, to what? Open your eyes to what's going on around you. Almost done here as we deal with these seals. Because iniquity, iniquity will abound. It will increase. The love, may, the love of many will grow cold. And we're seeing that today. Minister Baker just preached two weeks ago about we need love because the, the love is wax cold. And one minute people say they love you, next minute they don't. That's not true love. Love suffers. Love don't think no evil. Love covers a multitude of fault. Love will carry you through if it's true love. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. Now, this is very fitting because we're living in a time that the gospel has reached the globe. 
The gospel of Jesus Christ has reached the globe. globe. You got churches in China, India, you, you name it. New, uh, uh, New Zealand, New England, oh, listen, Spain, it has reached the globe. Amen. Now, Matthew 24, 9, 10, I read that. It talks about how then they will hand you over and be persecuted and, and you will be killed and you, you will be hated by all nations. You know, and we touched a little bit of that um, in Revelations, uh, the sixth chapter, 9 and 10, where it talks about those, those souls that was under the altar that cried out. Um, let me turn to that real quick. It says, here's Revelation 6, 9, and 10. When he opened this fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony that they held. Now, Jesus, he just, he just spoke this. He says, you will be killed for, for my name's sake. Now we see in Revelation, when this fifth seal is unveiled, we see it's been... Is being fulfilled right now. People are dying for the sake of Christ. He says that, and, and they cried out with a loud voice, How long, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on earth? How long? These souls cried out for justice. We talked about how Abel's blood cried out for justice. And we thank God for Jesus and all that he's done on the cross. And we talked about the great falling way, the false prophets, and so on and so forth. I want to drop to Matthew 24 and 29. I just got a few more scriptures um, that in my studying and in preparation I just want to touch on um, that was also in Revelation chapter 6 as well. Uh, Revelation, uh, Matthew 24 and 29. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven. And the power of the, power of the heavens will be shaken. Then, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with the power and the great glory. Now we see some of this. Here we go. We see Matthew 24 and 29. We see that in the book of Joel, the second chapter, um, verse 10, it talks about this. You can write this down. And then we also see it in verse 31. We also see this in Revelations 6 and 12. We see the similarity here. He says, and I watched as he opened the sixth seal, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. The sun became black, like sackcloth made from goat hair, and the moon became like blood, and the, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as the fig trees dropped its unripe figs when it's shaken by the strong wind. Then the heavens receded like a scroll when, it, when it's rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. So we see some of the similarities of the end of the age, even in the book of Revelation when these things, these things have not yet happened, but we see how Jesus spoke these things for warning and letting the apostles know. This is how you know when you're experiencing the persecution. This is how you know when you, the different times that you're in. You have to look at what's going on right now to discern what's really happening according to the word of God. Jesus spoke these very words. Everything that I'm talking about, Jesus spoke it. Now we're seeing it unveiled in the book of Revelations, that these things are soon to come. Some things are happening right now. We just haven't heard it. We haven't seen it. So some things are happening now. Some things will be unveiled. Okay? Some things are happening right now. There is some. There are believers they are experiencing persecution. There are believers that are dying for the sake of Christ and have died for the sake of Christ. 
We've seen it. Matthew 24 and 30 talks about how the Son of Man will appear in heaven. We see that in Revelation, the first chapter, verse 7, where it talks about when he returns, he returns with the clouds. And it talks about all those will mourn, they will, they will weep, even those who are persecuted. I, I, I'll read it for you so, so you can see the comparison. Here it is, Matthew 24 and 30. I'm going to read that, and then I'm going to go to Revelation 1 and 7. It says, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. This is Matthew 24 and 30. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. We're going to get to that today, hopefully. And they will, and they shall gather his elect, those who are chosen from the four winds, um, from one end of the heaven to the other. Okay, here we go. Let me get to this, and I'm going to get to chapter 7, so on and so forth. So we see this similarity here in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. It says, look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. We talked about the, the tribes. Every eye will see him, and even those who pierced him. His own people crucified him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn. we just seen this in, in, in Matthew 24 and 31, or 30. Because... It's all the trials of the earth will mourn because of him, even so, amen. So we see that the things that Jesus has spoken, the things that he has proclaimed, we see these things being unveiled to show us when these things happen, we, we know what time that we're in. And we, and we talk about the rapture, and it can happen at any moment. So that's why... We as believers, we need to be ready. We need to be prayed up. We need to make sure that we're doing the things that God has instructed us to do. Just want to touch on a couple more scriptures. You can write these scriptures down. Um, Matthew 24 and 31, which I just read about the trumpets, which we're, we're going to be transitioning into. We'll read that in Revelation 7, 1 and 3, and 8 and 6 because it talks about the four winds in Revelation 7, which we're going to get into in a few seconds. And then the trumpets are Revelations 8 and 6. And then we got Matthew 24 and 35, where it talks about heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. And Revelation 6. 13 and 14. Let me touch and read this. So just stay with me. Just trying to bring to light some of the things that Jesus had spoken in Matthew. And then we see these things being unveiled um, in the book of Revelations. Um, Revelation 6, 13 and 14. Yes. Which I've already read this. And we see how the earth was, was, going, to, was going through that, that, that stage of coming to an end. Because we see here, it says, I watched as he opened the sixth seal, I read it again, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black, and the sackcloth made from goat hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell from the earth, as a fig tree dropped its unripe figs when it has been shaken by the strong wind. Then the heavens receded, that means they draw it up, just like a scroll, like a scroll when it's, when it's rolled up, and every mountain in an island was removed from its place. Okay. So I just wanted to touch on those scriptures. We're going to transition to chapter 7. That Matthew chapter 24 plays a, 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 a huge role as far as things to come. Um, or things that were being unveiled in the book of Revelations now and things that will be. And I understand that some people are saying, well, it's not happened to the extreme. You know, it hasn't happened to, to us, but it's happening. Just because it happened, ha hasn't happened um, to a degree as far as in the United States, in the States, but it's happening. People are suffering for the sake of Christ. Just because it hasn't happened to you, that doesn't mean that the body of Christ have not experienced suffering or persecution. Just because you haven't experienced persecution like your, your brother or your sister in another country or in another state, listen, still, it's still happening. It's happening in stages. So we got to discern the times. 
So as we go to chapter 7, it says here, Then I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind would not blow on the earth or on the sea or any tree. So no destruction can come to the earth. They were just in place. Verse 2 says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having a seal of the living God. He cried out with a loud voice to the four angels, who had been given power to harm the earth. They have been given power. They were in position to bring destruction to the earth. Okay? He says, Who have been given power to, to harm the earth, watch this, and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the or the trees, until we have sealed the service of our God on their foreheads. Okay? So, no destruction can come to the earth until the children of God was sealed with the Holy Spirit. Sealed with the seal of God. Just looking at some of my notes to see if I had anything. Okay, and then it says here, verse 4, Then I heard a number of those who were sealed, 140,000 out of every tribe of the children of Israel. And we talked about this, that um, the 12 tribes, that two were taken out, which was Dan and Ephraim, because of their, as I studied, it talked about Dan and, and their adultery and, and um, their practicing of ungodly, um, of ungodliness, if I can say it that way. And Judges, the 18th chapter, verses 14 through 31, talks about the tribe of Dan. And in Ephraim, um, they did not keep the covenant of God. They refused to obey the law of God. And so we don't we see Levi, and then we see Joseph in, in, in the place, which Ephraim was the son of Joseph. And we see um, Levi in the place of Dan. But the Bible talks about, and, and Apostle Paul writes this in Romans eleven twenty six that all of Israel, all of Israel will be saved. So he talks about this. Even though we don't see these two in there at this present moment, um, all of Israel will be saved. So there, there's going to be a time that they're going to, they are going to repent. And we see a lot of this happening right now with the restoration of Israel even right now if you're following the news. All right. So those are, um, it, it talks about every tribe of the children of Israel. And it talks about 12,000 tribe of Judah so that you, you can actually read that in your own time. Uh, verse 9 here says the multitude of every nation. So it says, then I looked and there was a great multitude which no one could, could count. From all nations and tribes and people and tongues standing before the throne before the Lamb. So there's a number. So we had we had Israel being restored. We see the tribes of those who had the seal, his chosen people. But then we said there was a number that could not be numbered. That's dealing with us as believers, those who have accepted Christ. Those other nations, those other tribes, those who have received the gospel, they also have received the seal. So these things has to, has to happen. So there, the reality of this, and you hear me quote it quite often, that, you know, he wished that, you know, the Lord wished that none perish. So that's why we have to continue to um, preach the gospel, spread the gospel, tell, tell others about Jesus, tell others about accepting Christ. If they reject it, they reject it. Listen, we got to evangelize. We got to, we have to spread the gospel. We got to get the truth out there. Okay. This is not a time to sit back and chill. Listen, if you got to wear your mask, wear your mask and go spread the gospel. Sanitize your hands, do what you got to do. But people need to hear the gospel. There are people that are lost. There are people that are broken. There are people that need healing. There are people that need to be delivered. There are people that need Christ. We have what the world needs, but we got to share it through love. We got to share Christ. We can't pick and choose who we're going to share the gospel to. No, share the gospel. If you don't know if they saved, share the gospel and see if they saved. We, right now, it's a very important 
His church is not going to be as usual. I think we got so comfortable in doing Bible study and, you know, the way you do it and you do Sunday church the way you do it. Listen, church is not going to be the way it used to be. So now we got to bring church to the people. You got to bring church to the broken. You got to bring church to the unbeliever. You got to bring church to the atheist. You got to bring church to people that need Christ. They're not coming to your church. Some of you waiting for these people to come to your church. They're not coming to the church because... The reality of it, you hear their, their testimony, the church is too judgmental. So I'm not coming to be judged. But we need to bring truth and love to them, praying that they that we can win souls for Christ. You can't, you, can, you can't bring fire and brimstone to everybody. Some people just need by love and kindness. So sometimes you got to preach love. I'm not a grace preacher, but listen, the same grace that I need is the same grace that they need. You can't forget about that you, you got new grace and new mercy every day. And you don't want to be gracious. You want to condemn. No, you can't win them by condemning them. They already feel condemned. They already feel bad, bad about themselves. So we want to give them hope. We want to give them life. And the life and hope is in Christ. So this number that could not be numbered is dealing with those who have accepted Christ. And it talks about here, it says, and standing before the throne, this is Revelation 7 and 9, stand, and standing before the throne <coughs> and before the Lamb, clothed, clothed with white robes and palm trees, palm branches in their hand. And it kind of reminds you of Jesus' triumphal entry when they laid the palm and they laid their, their garments as he came in and they said, Hosanna, Lord, save us. And they cried out, salvation belongs to our, our God who sits on the throne and, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces and they worshiped. So what we see here, um, just for the sake of time, what we see here is, is worship being taken place at the throne of God. We see worship and them singing unto the Lord a new song and they're worshiping him um, at his feet and at his throne. If we can drop down to verse 13, it says, Then one of the elders asked me, Who are those clothed in the white robes? And where did they come from? I said to him, Sir, you know. He said to me, These are those who came out of the great tribulation washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So this those who cried out in Revelations 6 and 9, who cried out for justice, cried out for those who killed them. He said, these are those who came out of that great tribulation, those who came out of that great testing, that great persecution. And there's a greater persecution that's coming. But there has been those who, who have experienced great persecution for the sake of Christ. Okay, they've been beheaded, they've been killed. We see the, the apostles, uh, Apostle Paul, if I'm correct, was beheaded. Um, Peter was, was upside down. Um, um, I, I believe James was beheaded. John, uh, which is the writer of Revelation, was sent on the island of Patmos. So we've seen all the different apostles experience different, you know, Stephen, uh, a disciple uh, of the Lord. He was stoned. So we see all the different um, persecution that that they, uh, that the men and women of God have, have experienced for the sake of Christ. In this case, the men of God. So we've seen all this. It's, it's in the scripture. Let me continue in verse chapter 7. It says, and they, and they are before the throne of God, serving him day and night in his temple. He who sits on the throne and dwells among them, they should never hunger anymore. They should never thirst anymore. The sun should not strike them, the sun, with the heat. Um, they should not be affected by the sun. So, in other words, they be, they're going to be in a better place. When we are with our Savior again, we're going to be in a better place. We're going to have to worry about no more tears. We ain't going to have to worry about hunger. We're going to have to worry about fear. We ain't going to have to worry about all this stuff that we, we worry about now. Because we're going to be in a better place. We're going to be with him. We're going to be in our glorified bodies. We're going to take off this corruptible and put on incorruptible. We're going to have newness about us. 
All right? And I'll close with this. It says, and God will, last verse of chapter 7, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Now, we're going to transition to chapter 8. I got about 13 minutes. Um, and I'm going to try to cover as much as I can in chapter 8 and chapter 9, because really chapter 8 and chapter 9 goes together. And so in chapter 6, we've seen the first six seals. Um, we've seen them unveiled. We've seen them broken. Um, or let me say it this way. The first six seals were open. They were unveiled. And we've seen what was unveiled when the six seals were open. Now we're getting into chapter 8 where the seventh seal is open. Okay? The seventh seal. Here it is, chapter 8. When he opened the seventh seal, there were silence in the earth for about a half an hour. And I saw, John, this is John speaking, the seven angels who stand before God and seven trumpets were given to them. So here's the seven angels in position. Now, the seventh seal, now we're going to deal with the seven trumpets. And the seven trumpets, different things was unveiled as each trumpet, um, as each angel blew the trumpet. Now when we talk about the trumpet, the trumpet usually was um, something, a sound, uh, it was used for a sound of war, um, to distract the enemy. We've seen even, uh, I think it was with Gideon possibly, no, when they walked around the wall and, and, and they played the trumpet, distracted the enemy. Um, when, when they walked around the wall that, that, that seventh time. Um, when the trumpet is, is sound, it, it brings, the, it symbols the people of God um, together. A sound of warning. What we're going to see now is the sound of judgment. Because every time the trumpet sounds, judgment is taking place upon the earth. Okay? So it says here, Verse 2, and I saw the seven angels who stand before God, seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel having a gold censer. Now the gold censer, this is part of the worship. You have to go back to the Old Testament. And the gold censer, um, for lack of a better word, if I want to say a gold plate, and they would put the hot coals in the plate. And this was just part of the worship. And it says, it came and stood at the altar. And he was given much incense. Now, we, we talked about when the prayers of the saints and when they prayed and the, 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 uh, the incense uh, went up as they prayed. This is what we're going to see here um, as, it, as the scripture brings this out as well. This is all the saints of the golden altar, which was before the throne. The smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire, filled it with coal. Okay, so you had the censer, you put the coal. Um, coal was symbolic of fire. From the altar, and threw it on the earth, and there were noises and thunder, lightning, and earthquake. Now, before I get into the, the trumpets, um, I wanted to go to uh, Second Peter, before I get into the trumpets, because when I was growing up, I, I would hear the saints, the older saints, talk about you know the world won't be destroyed by water, but fire next time. Matter of fact, e even in my youth choir, we used to sing a song, "Fire next time." And so we know in the days of Noah how the whole world was destroyed by water. But here in Second Peter. Second Peter the second, no, Second Peter the third chapter. We're going to look at verses six through thirteen. Second Peter, third chapter, six through thirteen. And this would be fitting because as we go through the different trumpets you're going to see some of the similarities of what Peter wrote in his letter to the believers. Here it is, uh, 2 Peter, 3rd chapter, verse 6. 
looking at a few other scriptures. Okay, it says, verse 6, by which the world that then existed was flooded with water and perish, which we just talked about. That was then the days of Noah. But by the same word, the heaven and earth that now exist, Tama currently, are being reserved for fire. Keep for the day of judgment. This is what we're experiencing. We're, the seventh seal has been opened, and each trumpet is going to unveil judgment that's taking upon the earth. And destruction of the ungodly. Okay, we, we'll touch on that in a minute. He says, but beloved, do not be ignorant of this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow or slack concerning his promise, as some count slowness or slackness. But he is patient with us, because he does not want any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, it will come unexpectedly. You don't know when he's coming. You got to be ready. In which the heavens will pass away with a loud noise. We just touched on plenty of scripture how the heavens will pass away with a loud noise. And the elements will be destroyed with intense heat or fire. The earth and all also and the works that are in it will be burned up. Seeing then that all these things are to be destroyed... What sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness while you are waiting for and desiring the coming of the day of the Lord in which the heavens will be destroyed by fire and the elements will be consumed by intense heat? But according to his promise, we are waiting for the new heaven and new earth in which righteousness dwells. And so we're made righteous through Christ. He made us righteous. So this, this uh, Peter's, in Peter's letter to, to the church and to the believers, um, he gives us insight what's going to take place here in the book of Revelations with the seventh seal being open. We have the seven angels in position. They're going to blow the trumpet. Every time they blow a trumpet, there is judgment or destruction um, coming to the earth and coming to those who are on the earth. We, we're we're going to actually see this. And I'm going to try to cover as much as I can. Here it is. Revelations 8 and 6. I got five minutes. I'm just going to cover a couple of them. We will get into chapter 8 and chapter 9 um, next week. It says, Then the seven angels who had seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. The first angel sounded and there followed hell and fixed and fire mixed with blood. And they were thrown upon the earth. A third of the trees and all of the green grass was, was uh, burned up. So we see a lot of vegetation or we see a lot of, of crops or, 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 or the land being burned up. Verse 8 says, then, then the second angel sounded and like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. A third sea became blood. A third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died because of the blood that was in the sea. And a third of the ships were destroyed. Verse 10 says, a third, The third angel sounded, and a great star from heaven, burning like a torch, fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of the water. So the sea was even uh, contaminated and destroyed. It says the name of this star was Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood and many died. It was contaminated. So what we're seeing is the destruction of, if I could say, vegetation, of uh, the trees, the water, the sea, um, the land, um, each time the trumpet sounded. Now, Peter talked about this because we've seen fire. Every time the trumpet was sound, fire, one-third of it affected the sea. One-third of it um, affected the trees. One, and so we see one-third. So this is not a total judgment. This is a partial judgment that we see here because there's only a third of the water, of, of the sea. It's only a third of the trees, okay, that has been burned up, okay? So I'm going to stop right there. What, what I will do, I'm going to do on next week is that 
I'm going, my review will be chapter 8. I may do a refresher with um, 2 Peter chapter uh, 3. I may read 6 through 13 again, just, just for uh, scriptural context, so we can flow into Revelations 8. And then we're going to cover Revelations 8, 9, and, and 10 on next week. So please read Revelations 8, 9, and 10. We will cover those scriptures as we see now that the seventh seal has been opened. Seven angels in place, they're blowing the trumpets, and we see a third of destruction coming to um, the earth. And we just read in, in 2 Peter that, that um, the earth will be destroyed by fire. And so we're actually seeing this as the trumpets. This is what's going to happen. Things we're talking about now are things to come, things that are going to happen. And so uh, we will touch base on these scriptures on next week. Thank you all for those who have tuned in. I pray that you were patient with me. I just wanted to bring out some scripture that was in uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter, that will help give us even more clarity and understanding in Revelations chapter 6, chapter 7, even as we're in chapter 8. So God bless you. Have a blessed evening. As you know, this Thursday will be downtown Youngstown. Um, meet us in the marketplace as we're, we're down there just, just praying and interceding for those who are lost. You know, praying for believers. We're praying for unbelievers. We're praying for uh, those who, who need Christ in their life. And feel free to join us. If you are a believer, you are a leader. And listen, and let's come together. We're all a part of the body of Christ. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, listen, we are a part of the body of Christ. Let's come together and let's pray for a change. Let's pray for a change. And I believe God can do something mightily if we can come together and pray for a change. So listen, God bless you. Feel free to join us Thursday. And as you know, this Sunday, we do an hour of power here at SIG Ministries. Feel free to join us this coming, third, this coming Sunday at 1030 a.m. God bless you. As you see, I have my links. If you desire to give, you can give through PayPal. You can give through Cash App. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, all of our services and teachings are on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. And I also share the link for our t-shirts. If you desire to purchase a Stand Up Gap Ministry t-shirt in support of our ministry, please do so. It's a very simple process. Just click on that last link um, to our actual t-shirt webpage. And you can have your t-shirt delivered right to your house. Does not matter where you are. We can have it delivered and shipped right to your house. And so please, um, subscribe to my YouTube, YouTube page, and then also um, I encourage you to sow a seed, sow a seed, sow a seed. If this teaching has blessed you, sow a seed, and I'm encouraging you to, to purchase a t-shirt. So God bless you, and once again, thank you for tuning in.